What's going on traders? Thank you for joining us for our Sunday Stock Talk. For those that are joining us for the first time, I have a group, it's Tech Bud Solutions. We're a little bit over 31,000 members now worldwide. And the thing that we do best is we provide a free supportive community for both new and experienced traders. The link is down in the description to join our Facebook group and you simply have to have a Facebook account. Again, it's all free. On the top pinned post, there are a series of group chats available. Within those group chats, just make sure that you agree to the terms and conditions, meaning that, you know, supportive and welcoming environment for both new and experienced traders. As long as you're okay with that, again, it's free. I want to make sure that focus on three things, right? When it comes to trading, if you guys are just starting out or if you guys are experienced within our community, we want to make sure that we focus on three things that we never trade based on anyone else's opinion. This could be kind of like, you know, this is a networking platform, but we never trade based on anyone else's opinion. It doesn't mean that you can't be open-minded and allow exposure to kind of like, you know, meet your way. But when it comes down to making your sole decision or sole investment decision based on someone else's opinion, we do not do that, right? And you only invest, the second one is you only invest in whatever it is that you see value in and understand. If you don't understand why it's a good buy and you don't understand that, you know, you could buy and sell for a profit or you don't understand what's going on, you just see that there's a lot of hype, maybe a lot of manipulation, a lot of talk about a stock, but you don't understand why it's going up don't trade it. That's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make because you don't understand where it is that you're buying. You don't understand if you're buying closer to the resistance. You don't understand anything about the stock. You're kind of just, again, and that's definitely one of the biggest mistakes that people make. The third one is something that I think that has led to my success when it comes to being a successful day trader is I'm more of a technical day trader. So I'm not the normal traditional kind of momentum trades, uh, momentum trader that, you know, kind of like how we have Connor. Connor's a future channel within our YouTube channel and he's more of a momentum trader. He looks for breakout stocks, although I do the same. I keep more of a tighter stop loss, meaning that I identify the support, the resistance. I set up a plan on where I'm buying, where I'm selling, and where I'm going to cut my losses. That's the third rule. Always have a plan. Always being able to manage your risk. So always being able to keep a tight stop loss and always, you know, locking in profits and consistently uh, are consistent. So I want to thank each and every one of you guys. I know I kept you guys waiting for about 10 minutes um, or maybe like eight minutes, but I want to thank each and every one of you guys for for our Sunday stock check, I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. So we're going to kind of get into our routine. I'm going to perform the technical analysis first. And as you guys noticed this week, I did not ask what it is that you guys wanted me to analyze. And the reason why was I kind of wanted to do it the way that we previously did it just for this week and see what you guys think. And last couple of weeks, we've been doing it as in like I asked you guys on the Facebook, you know, the TechBook Solutions Facebook platform. You know, what is it that you guys want me to analyze during this Sunday stock talk? So it gives you guys a voice. A lot of the people were choosing these very low cap stocks that I think were very like kind of like overhyped or over manipulated. And I feel like it wasn't kind of, it was kind of making people focus on stocks that didn't necessarily have that value. Or even if they did have potential, they weren't able to identify it. So I'm simply going to go down a list of about five stocks that I'm still open, you know, to any opinion that you guys have. But again, I'm just going to be sharing my whole thought process in no way should you guys be making a trade based on, you know, what it is that I'm saying. Again, it comes down to the principle of only trading what you invest in and not trading based on someone else's opinion. People usually find kind of just me sharing my whole thought process on how I identify potential, how I manage my risk, how I plan out my trade to be somewhat easy to understand. And that's why I go live. I go live in this live stream uh, for the Sunday stock talk. But if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you guys know that I go live Monday through Friday during pre-market hours as you know, I talk to you guys and as we talk about our trades and then during 15 minutes of the market open, I kind of end the live stream and let you guys focus on your trades as well as I like to do the same because it's kind of overwhelming um, trades when I have a bunch of questions that are coming in and I feel, you know, it, it kind of just to be, you know, a, a I'm not answering your guys' questions, and I really want to make sure that I dedicate time when you guys ask them to answer your questions, but I can't do that when I'm trading. So it kind of comes to like kind of overwhelming myself, and I definitely don't want to do that. So let me go ahead and get logged into my TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform for those that are going to be asking what platform am I, going to, am I using. I use the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform for my real-time quotes, but I don't use it to execute trades. I use... Um, I use Fidelity to execute trades. The reason I use Fidelity is because of the lower commissions that they have. It's $4.95 per commission instead of $6.95 for TD Ameritrade. And I'm more familiar with that platform. It's one that I started out with. Um, but I've actually gotten in contact with Fidelity. I got in contact with TD Ameritrade to you know, restart this $1,000 challenge just because of the bad experience we had with Robinhood. But 
Again, if you guys are enjoying it and still seeing the growth of the $1,000 challenge, I still have a bunch of people following up with me and just talking about how this, you know, just idea that I exposed them to of the power of compounding interest and, and how powerful it could be just to consistently lock in profit, even if it's, you know, one, two, three, four percent, whatever it is, profit is profit. And in the long run, if you think about the amount of days that you are trading, if you lock in 2% a day out of the five days, right, 12 times um, or four times a month, huge. And you guys have to understand that, right? You know, keep, you know, th there's a lot of people making a lot of money, but also a lot of people that are trading a lot more than, you know, are risking a lot more than you. So they might be a little bit more experienced. Just understand that your time will come, but it comes down to the principle of, you know, scaling out your success within your own means. You don't need to prove yourself to anyone. You don't need to, you know, do anything that's out of your comfort zone. Just continue working hard in what it is that you're doing. And that's it. If it makes sense to you and you understand that, you know, you're going to become a profitable trader in your own skill and at your own time, then that's all you guys need to do. So um, that's enough for me kind of just talking. I'm going to start sharing my screen. My TD Ameritrade, as you guys could, um, my thinkorswim platform is kind of like, and pretty much it. Cheer says, I missed the first 10 minutes. <laughs> um, appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, that was a funny comment. That he says he pretty much just likes the talks that I have during the first 10 minutes before I actually get into like analyzing stock. So I appreciate that. I really do. Um, but let's go ahead and start just and what I see potential in. Um, I usually focus on stocks with pretty healthy amounts of volume. Last week I did a mistake or made a mistake on um, focusing on ZN, which didn't see a healthy amount of volume, but I ended up trading it very well. If you guys followed within the group chat, I told you guys, you know, I, I saw the bounce at $3.75. I bought in at $3.80. I shouted it out that, you know, it has the margin, the resistance at $4, and I ended up breaking $4, and I called out the resistance at $4.20, but I sold at $4.05, and it hit 420, it hit 421 if I'm not mistaken, and I saw a huge pullback. So I left like $130 of profit on the table, but I still did very well with that trade, and I made up some of my losses that I saw with my first two positions on ZN. So kind of just, and that's one that I'm going to be talking about because I still think, based on the trend that I see, I still think it has potential. Again, start performing my technical analysis. Please do your own DD, meaning that you guys do your own work and identify your own potential. Um, I have to say, and if it makes sense to you, great. If it doesn't, please, you know, you don't have to use it 100%. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. So I really do, again, want to thank you guys for joining us. So let's go ahead and get to it. So let's see if I can put you guys. It doesn't let me do both. I kind of want to see if we can. Okay, well, level two right now isn't going to be important because um, market isn't open. Again, it's Sunday. But this is this is the end. So I'm just going to go right into it. Um, this is the end. I'm going to go a little bit further back. Let's do a 10-day analysis. The reason that ZN came to my radar was actually because of your guys' suggestion. Um, it came out to someone's suggestion, hey, you know, Ricky, go check out ZN. Does that mean that I have to trade it? No. As a trader, it comes down to you taking this exposure and making sense of whatever it, you know, and that's really just it. Use exposure to your best advantage. So what is it that I did is I saw, and it already had this huge play. I saw this huge play that it had. It had a resistance at 690, and then it was showing signs of downward momentum. But what I saw was when it actually had this huge play, someone did call it out during pre-market hours when it had a huge pre-market spike and then it did hit highs of 690 and it saw a downward trend. I traded it the following day and that's when I ended up um, getting into it. But it, it came down to being exposed to the opportunity of what ZN offered. I didn't jump into it right away because I didn't really understand it. But once it started to calm down, again, it came down to the $4 mark. It was like $4 or $4.50. Um, I identified $4 to be the support and then $4.50 to be the resistance. Well, why is it that identify that to be the support and resistance? What well, comes down to really just looking at where it and we'll end up hitting 430. This was on the initial drop. 430, it hit highs of five, saw a pullback and did a very good job of luck during uh, pre market after market hours, held above 451. So it did, you know, it did good and then saw an upward trend and then saw a huge pullback. And it broke below. This is the initial drop that it went below $4, saw an upward trend. 
And then it's been kind of like, it's kind of been all over the place. But what I really wanted to focus on was the support at $4. So when it came down to the $4 support that we saw here, and then the resistance that it had at 450. Why is there a resistance at 450? Well, like we knew a couple days ago, there was a support at 150. So like we know, become new resistance levels. So it was peaking out at 450, saw a downward trend, that made sense to me. It had a, a somewhat of a support at 420, as you guys could see that it was bouncing there, and that's that was one day, right? The following day, it ended up breaking that support at 420, and then it started dropping to lows of $4. $4 to 420, it built this margin for being a $4 stock of about 5% trade worth risking for myself right um, and that's when I hit lows of 408 if I'm not mistaken or 406 that's when I got filled at 408 and then the following day for at four dollars saw a huge drop to three dollars and 75 cents when it broke above the resistance at 380 that's when I bought in again I waited for the bounce I didn't get the lowest point I waited for the pullback waited for the bounce waited for the break above the resistance at 380 I was gonna sell at four dollars four dollars the volume spiked I put my stop loss at four dollars and then it ended up hitting highs of let me see if I can actually get it about four dollars ended up hitting a peak and it, it had a resistance at 410 it saw a downward trend and I thought it was gonna come and break below four dollars so because I had my stop loss at four dollars I removed my stop loss and I put a limit order to sell at 405 I got filled and right as I got filled it broke above 405, broke above 410, broke above 415, hit the resistance at 420. Why is it that I knew that 20? Again, guys, comes to the understanding of old supports become new resistance levels. I knew that 420 was going to be the resistance was because of the old support, the prior support that I had a couple days ago. If you guys don't know what support is, at 420. So because of the, the previous bounce or support that it had at 420, Become new resistance level. So again, just going based on trends, 420 was the resistance. I called it out in the group chat, and then that's when start, people started locking in profits. And that that's really just it. It made sense to me on why it, it peaked out at 420. If it does, you know, and it was something that I understood because I, I was previously analyzing ZN. I think I think it comes down to the understanding of again, I didn't trade ZN when everyone else was trading. There was a bunch of hype, but Someone, I don't want to say they put me in the spot for ZN to like, hey, look at ZN. It's going to you know, burst out and it's going to do very well. That's too much hype for me. I'm not much of a momentum trader. Am I going to make the decision to jump into it and kind of hope for the best? That's not my style. And I think I traded JNUG that day. And again, it, I didn't make the $4 to you know $6.90 profit because that was enormous. But realistically, with what I did, I did it within my, I, I'm not here to prove myself to anyone, right? And people because people start locking you know 10 20 30 percent profit although like that's really nice and they're doing very well understand that you need to grow and lock in profits at your own pace if you're locking in two to three percent profits let that be your thing but let that you know consistency be your thing because that's your own style is that bad that you're not locking in as much as them well no because the more they risk and the more they make also it's you know just known because you know they're risking more that they're gonna see big, bigger losses than you as well so it just comes down to identifying your style of trading, trading with whatever it is that you feel comfortable investing in and what you're investing in. I would have not traded the end of the first day because I didn't understand it. So I took a step back. I, I tried to analyze the charts. I tried to identify potential. I set up a plan on where I was buying and where I was selling, and I failed my first two times when it came down to my trade on Friday. But I ended up doing very well on my last trade because it was kind of like, you know, I actually waited for the bounce and I waited for the break above the resistance. And that's not something that I was doing trades that day. If you guys saw my position, I waited for the bounce at like 395, but it wasn't really a bounce. It didn't break above a resistance. So it wasn't really showing signs of upward momentum. It just did a slight bounce and then it broke again below the support of 390. And then, um, but it, again, it comes down to just understanding what you're investing in. So I'm sorry that, yes. On why I didn't trade ZN the first day, and it just I didn't understand you know what what ZN offered. So um, kind of going a little bit more into it, rig. If I'm not mistaken, again I'm just going to go down the list, see what we can find. Well, this is this is pretty sweet. Rig bounced at the same support it had around the same support. So I had a support if you guys see here, 
um, 770. So we should have seen that. It peaked out at 83, so pretty much a resistance at 880. So it's, it, it's actually, we called this one out. This out. We called out the support. It was showing signs of upward momentum. And all I did was to identify this, this growth that it was showing was I identified the two supports, again, higher than the older support. So I just drew a line across that. And then that showed me at the rate that it was, you know, growing at. And then I drew a, you know, parallel line, support line. And that was my resistance sign. And it really helped us out because I kept selling my profit or my trade when I bought in at 808. Um, when I bought in at 808, I think about with 880 shares, I didn't go in very heavy. I had my stop loss at $8. Why is it that I had my stop loss at $8? Well, I understood that the previous support was at $8, and if it broke below that support, it meant that you know this, this sign of upward momentum was broken and it was going to start going back down. So understanding that, I bought in at 808 right here, and I had my stop loss at $8. So my potential for a loss was about 1%. And my potential for profit because I was buying again. It's showing signs of upward momentum. This is my support line. I was buying close to the support. For it was showing signs of upward momentum. I sold at 820. It wasn't breaking 820. It kept seeing huge pullbacks. And then at the end of the day, it ended up hitting highs of 835. And if you guys watched that video, I called out the resistance at around 835 to 840 around this margin. And that's exactly what we called it out at. Now again, it, it's peaking out. What is it to expect, or what is it that we expect? Week so well on Friday I expect it to be a little bit closer to the support so somewhat of a pullback but it, it's doing a very good job going back the resistance about 830 so or 880 so it has this margin still a profit of about 4.63 percent but it's kind of distance right here kind of like momentum kind of flatlined and then broke up and then went back down Showing signs of upward momentum. We're going to need to watch for the break at 840. So what am I going to do? I'm going to set my alert above 840. I'm not using terms that are a little bit confusing. If I am, please feel free to comment once this you know live stream publishes, or feel free to direct message me within the Tech One Solutions group chat or any other member. You guys can feel free to ask you know any questions on certain terms that I'm saying that you guys don't necessarily understand. Um, and we're here to help you. That's one of the biggest things that you guys understand. But please make sure that you guys use Google, right? If it's a commonly um, asked question or frequently asked question, um, feel free to you know ask Google. Or if you want to get a better understanding, I do have a bunch of helpful videos within my platform. So I think we have a pretty good understanding of what to expect for rigs. So that's definitely one that I'll follow up with. This is the one that I want to talk about as well. Had a huge drop. I think I literally make the uh, made the video. I'm not too sure if you guys saw, but it was pretty funny. Oh, sorry about that. Let's see if I can go to my channel. 102,000 subscribers. I forgot to thank you guys. Um, I mean, you guys, you guys know you guys are like the best because, I mean, I, I keep telling you guys we're we're growing at a really great pace, and I really do appreciate everything it is that you guys do. This is today's new video about one thousand dollars profit in 24 hours. If you guys haven't seen that, and then the fourplex that um, I made an offer on. So if you guys haven't watched that yet tangent and I forgot what it was that I was saying. My video that I made on Snapchat is probably the funniest video or the worst timing. I, I've been thinking about making a video on Snapchat because you know I just Snapchat's like a very reputable company when it comes to a very popular company, right? So why I bought Snapchat at 17? Guys, I, it literally had a support and look guys I'm not kidding. Or I guess at $17, never broke below $17 for, for the entire of this IPO since its launch. Always broke at $17, uh, bounce at $17, exactly at $17, and hit $18. Was holding above $17.20, hit $18 again, so the resistance $18, support around $17 to $17.20, and it's done this numerous times. And right as I make my video, literally, that I had it scheduled to upload, I canceled it. And I was like, wait, I stop lost out. I had my stop loss at, at 1699, so right below the support, 1607. So it was a very small loss, but it came down to the principle of like, I, I wanted to make sure that I uploaded it like after the market closed. And the reason why was I didn't want people to think that I was overhyping the stock that I was in. Um, so I wouldn't give them the opportunity to actually buy when the market's closed. But 
I also stopped lost out. So it kind of was like, you know, well, what the heck? Why is he talking about a stock that, you know, did the complete opposite of what he said? Well, if you guys watched the video, I actually say that, you know, just because 17 is a support, it doesn't mean that it's not going to go below 17. And that's why it was so important for myself to have my stop loss at, you know, 16.99. And regardless of what you think about a company or regardless of how, you know, strong you think your support is, anything can happen. And that's why it's so important to always have a plan on where to buy, where to sell, and where to cut losses. Because when worst comes to worst, by being able to manage your risk, you can keep losses small. So people were like, oh man, and like this guy took an, if you guys watched the video, I had my stop loss at 16.99. It was a very minimal loss because of my purchase price at 17.07. So it's been dropping so much. And based on what I've read, there is an underwriter that valued that supposedly overvalued Snapchat at like twenty dollars, which led to that huge increase. If you guys saw, um, so let's just go to the life of the line. So when it launched all the way to twenty nine, and then it started doing pretty poorly, and then it broke below the support, or it was at like seventeen dollars, you know, and it was holding above the seventeen dollar support, and then supposedly this individual re-uploaded um, or you know published another article about. Well, no, he made a mistake. It's actually valued, you know, way less than the $28 valuation, which in a sense caused a series of panic sellers. So people, because of this valuation that this underwriter, a lot of people now didn't trust Snapchat, a huge downward trend, a huge just overselling, right? This RSI indicated that it was just way oversold, but am I going to go and trade based solely on RSI? Well, no, right? Because it ended up not bouncing back. But what I can see is that it's holding very well. 20. It has gone below 1520 before, but understand that 1520 is a pretty solid support since $16. When it had a, a pretty solid bounce, when I thought it was going to make its way back up, and that was on Thursday, it peaked out at about six, seven, uh, $16, a little bit below, you know, 16. So uh, 1597. And that would make sense, right? Uh, from 15 to 16, that makes sense. It's back in year at support. So how can we set up a plan that makes sense? Well, understanding that 1520 is a pretty solid support. And if you want to be a little bit riskier, $15 would be, you know, another way to go. What I would like to focus on is to get near, if I see that it's starting to show signs of upward momentum, if I can get near to a purchase price of about 1520, $16 based on this previous trend and put my stop loss if it goes below. So why does that make sense? Well, it comes down to risk management. It comes down to the understanding, what's my potential for profit for loss? This trade makes sense. Is this something that I'm hoping for that has never happened before? Well, if I go, you know, simply one day back, it, it bounced from 15, 13 dollars, right? Understanding that it's happened before, it's done it before. I've identified the resistance and I've identified where I'm gonna stop, put my stop loss. And that's gonna be 15.10. And that's why I have my alert right there. So. Talking about my, my own opinion, please like don't trade based on my own opinion. But what it comes down to is on Snapchat, or I see that it's worth the risk, 20. And if I put a stop loss at 15.10, because it's a $15 stock, percentage calculator right here, I'm risking from 15, uh, at 15.10 from 15.20. If I stop loss, I'll, I'll stop loss if it goes below 15.10. So at 15.09, about 0.7%. What's my potential for profit? For those that don't know this drawing tool on TD Ameritrade Thinker, so I'm going to Drawing Tools, and it's called Trendline. I always get that question. So now from 1520, what's my potential for profit? To highs of 16, you know, from support to resistance, 4.97. Therefore, my potential for profit, what is that? Like, no, not nine. Uh, a little bit more than six times more than my potential for loss. Therefore, my potential for profit is my potential for loss. Therefore, that's a risk worth taking. Makes sense to you guys? Don't trade in. And why that's a support, why that's a resistance. Look a little bit more into it, and if it doesn't make sense, don't trade it. Thought process on why I see value in it. Kind of in a little bit more detail. Because when it comes down to, there's, there's so many people that like ask me like, why is it that I always trade the same stocks? It's because I under, it's what I understand. It's the hype because sometimes people expose me to good opportunity, but I don't make the decision right away to invest in it because I don't understand it. Does that make me lose 
you know, some opportunity sometimes? Well, yes, because I'm not, you know, the quickest decision maker because and what my potential for profit is greater than my potential for loss. It, I really want to hear what you guys have to say. So if you guys want to, honestly, right now, in the, I, I want to read what you guys have to say. So if you put your stop loss, um, do you watch it all day because you can't put a stop loss in the market? So. Stop loss. So if you guys don't know what that is, a stop loss is like when the market price hits that specific price point, it will sell your position right away. So to watch all day and it's something that I set alerts on. So it's not necessarily something that I have to worry about. Your stock, it's, it's kind of like torture, right? Especially it's as it's approaching support. I swear. Literally like it, it's one of you, like when you see your stock, like if it's, you can see your stop loss, you know where your stop loss is at, right? Let's say it's at 1510 and I see it approaching like to hit like 15.10 or it's at 15.12, you're just like, Ugh, right? It's just a bad experience. And why, why go through that, right? Um, if you have a plan and it makes sense to you and, and you wrote it on paper, put it in your head or put it on your computer on where you're buying, where you're selling and where you're going to cut your losses, you can make is the way that I wanted. I'm going to swing trade it because I don't want to waste my day trade because I'm not going to sell for profit or it's not enough profit or I'm actually taking a loss and that's not what I wanted. guys into swing trades that's actually a, a member within technical solutions told another member that and i thought that was one of the coolest things because that's true why would you convert a plan that you have for day trading into a swing trade it's because it didn't play out the way that you expected or that you hoped for letting your emotions come into play because you're not happy the way it came out and when you you know when you're day trading stocks a lot of you guys focus on low cap stocks so pulled a stock that was supposed to be a day trade. Now, now you're putting, you know, a bunch of more risk on the table. So that was that was a kind of like, you know, something that that I wanted to share with you guys because I, I feel like a couple of you guys, um, or you know, a couple of traders make the decision to uh, day trades come out to be string trades. So, hand, Logan, <laughs> you're hilarious. Fifteen twenty. Uh, how close do you want it to be approaching support? It, it, it was just an example. So. 1520 it came down to understanding that 1520 support i mean stocks usually like to balance at like you know fives or zeros so understanding that i just thought 1520 would be a pretty decent support um but in no way does it have to be you know it doesn't mean that it's exactly going to bounce at 1520 i'm just saying that's the support so i'm going to try to buy close or near to the support once it's starting to show signs of upward momentum so that's a good question appreciate that Nick smith what's up I answered that. Are you trading on Thinkorswim? I am um, doing my technical analysis and I view my stocks on Thinkorswim, but I execute on Fidelity. Uh, <laughs> Does my background say milky ass? Oh my goodness. No, no, no. <laughs> Whoa. Milky assets. It's my. Um, if you guys check this um, video out or any of my other videos, there's a link. It's my property management company. That's a hilarious question. That's so funny. I didn't see that. You're hilarious, Connor. Thank you for the, for the backup. I appreciate that. It's lagging bad. I really do appreciate uh, I mean, apologize for that, guys. Dead ass. Um, when it comes down, I mean, this is kind of like, there's no, what the heck I don't like that um oh, milk, yeah. um that, that's kind of a difficult question just to kind of answer like because because it, it's not that you know just black and white um because cut losses if the stock if i'm up on a stock and it was a day trade then i automatically will just lock in profits that's one of the biggest things especially if it's a day trade if it's something that's like something that I was thinking about swing trading, kind of hoping to day trade, but I had a plan to swing trade as well, then that can be a little bit different, right? But understanding the principle of, you know, just if you're day trading something like DCTH, which is a very volatile stock, very, you know, just, and you're hoping to trade it. So you're trying to buy at like, you know, 15 and trying to sell at 20 and then ended up dropping to lows of 12. 
and then holding it because it didn't play out the way you wanted. Well, understand that you know you're breaking rules. You know, for myself, I don't like trading trading stocks less than a dollar. Yet alone holding one of these stocks, you know, overnight. So it just comes down to your style, and it's not you know just black and white. It comes down to you on how you justify you know your hold. Maybe you see more success holding stocks overnight. I don't know. You know, it, it, it's your own style. So kind of test the waters, but understand that the principle of holding a stock overnight due to it not playing out or performing the way that you wanted, it's probably not the best decision based on my own experience. So AMD, let's see. Okay, so AMD has been playing out the way that we kind of expected it. Again, we called out the support and the resistance the way that it's been appreciating in value. We understand that the overall resistance was at $15. It hit a really strong resistance at $14.15, wasn't able to break that. And if we get a little bit closer to how it's been playing out, set up, okay. It bounced at about 1340. 1340 was the, or if you want to call it 1330 the true support, but I think 1340 is more of a true support because of the bounce that it had um, you know, on Thursday and then on Friday as well. Hit a resistance at about $14, so wasn't able to break it. Based on how AMD has been performing, I actually think that it's still going to continue to drop. The reason that I think that is because the support isn't necessarily met. I think it's most likely going to bounce at around 13. So I would like to give it a little bit more room for it to see a little bit more of a downward trend as it's, you know, following these trends of, you know, these bounces that it has. Man, this thing needs to load. That it has at the support lines that we've been able to call out very well. And again, I haven't changed these support lines and they've been playing out perfectly. So I'd like this to wait and to come a little bit closer to, the, you know, $13 mark, um, $12.75 actual bounce and when it breaks above 13 or like you know 13 20 then i can buy in there and then sell around 14 50 again i'm not going to trade if it doesn't make sense to me and yeah so right let's do one last one and i want you guys to suggest it do i have a uh, pattern day trade prevention guide no but i i've made a video on you know how to avoid pdt so i mean i talked to you guys about you know what the pdt rules and you guys can simply search you know the pdt rule and then search, search it with my name on YouTube and my video should pop up. Day trading, if I'm mainly trading penny stocks, what should I, oh, well, I mean, if the whole point of day trading is to trade low cap stocks and now you can't trade because you're blocked as a pattern day trade, you might want to look at a different brokerage company um, and move your funds elsewhere because I mean, in a stock that's supposed to be meant for day trading as a swing trade. But again, do whatever it is that you see value in. That's just my own opinion. Rad. HK. Diaz. Let's see what you guys are saying. I see HUSA. All right. A10, right, eight. <laughs> JDST, that's t-shirts yet. We have Sergio that's still managing that. <laughs> well, you can't really do a technical, that's more of like a momentum change because it's more on high or what you hope. It's more on fundamentals on that. Well, I'll, I'll search them up. How about that? Um, let's do JDSC and I'll see if it's worth talking about. Come on, Ricky. Uh, okay, so support at around 67. It's, it's at support. So that means that this is more at support. It still has this margin. If it breaks below that support, but it has this margin to appear. Okay. So JDST, again, I'll just go over it very quickly. Has a support here around 60, 68. Let's see, understanding um, 5.7% potential, waiting for the bounce. Um, but again, the, the inverse ETF is JNUG. Showing signs of consistent signs of upward momentum. Once it breaks and if it does hold above $17, that will be the big move because then that can make it move back to that $20 resistance, which is about 13%. So above 20, uh, $17 and hold above $17 and maybe hold above $17.50. I think that's what I would wait for. I have my alerts set already. So 
that I guess I already analyzed that. Feel free to reach out to me. I've had a couple of people reach out to me. It comes down to the pricing um, for the Tech Buds t-shirts. Um, I'm not a huge apparel guy, so it's profitable, but that's not what we're looking for uh, when it comes to Tech Buds. And I guess I'll just share it with you guys, and I want you guys you know, to opinion. So real quick, we'll get back into like the analyzing stuff. But it's a question that I get so, so often um, about the Tech Buds like apparel and stuff like that. So you guys have seen, if you guys follow me on my Instagram, again, the link is down below. If you guys haven't followed me already, I've been posting kind of like the Tech Buds tees. And there's just samples and then with different distributors and working with different like kind of like ideas. But the principle is I buy it at shirts at H&M. I don't spend more than like so for me, as a person that's going to be putting apparel out there, which is not necessarily something I want Tech Buds to be focused on, but since you guys have asked for apparel, the price to be as low as possible because I want this shirt for about ten to fifteen dollars, or you know, as as cheap as I can, but want it to be good material. I really like the H and M material. I think it's like like how long it lasts, and I love the feeling. It is just something that's very comfortable. I want myself to feel comfortable in it, but I want it to be something that I would have personally bought. And I don't, I wouldn't buy. I'm not a huge spender when it comes to like clothing, and that's just my style. And why would I promote or distribute? Right um, or what it is that I would wear or in the price range, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I feel like a lot of you guys are like myself, focus all your time and money into investing in different things. And you know, if we want to look good, you know, that's a good thing. I, I'd much rather feel good, and I like the tech buds design, right? Because it's like my company. But um, other than that, I, I want to focus on good material, um, a good fit, good feeling, and as low cost as possible. Because I'm not again. Tech Buds is not a clothing brand, you know, it's not an apparel thing. So if it comes down to you guys being able to different people that are watching this that can get in contact with someone that can get us to a low enough price that you start selling them at ten dollars, then that would be the target, right? Target price. I, I I'm not here to try to like sell them for like thirty, forty dollars or anything like that because I wouldn't buy those t-shirts. It looks like my chat got disconnected. Um, but yeah, let me start sharing my screen and let's go back to it. So, <laughs> all right, let's let's get back to the technical analysis. Sorry about that. Team. Again, TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim, guys. Cara, that was one that we're looking at. I'll do these pretty quick. Solid balance at 11.83. Um, Hit a resistance at 16. Is seeing a downward trend. So, peaked out at 16 and started seeing a downward trend. And it really comes down to that breaking point or that breaking of the resistance that I think can lead to a huge momentum um, break if it breaks above um, 16. So, I'm going to set my alerts. I think that's a really good breaking point. If it starts to go back down, uh, if it starts to go back down, then I'd like to be alerted um, when it's a little bit closer to the $14 support. Alrighty, so good call on that one. Thank you for that. FTR. FTR bounce. Okay, so this thing, this FTR, it, it cracked me up because this thing's back at $13. This thing was trading at a super low price. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was of a dollar and um, it went through like a 125 uh, 25 reverse stock split so it started to bounce hit a resistance at $15 has a support at $13 but as you guys can see when it goes through a reverse stock split it usually sees a huge downward trend if you guys don't know what a reverse stock split is literally search up reverse stock split with my name on it on YouTube and I will I have a video explaining what it is but um, I would like to see if, if we can see a momentum trade it would be for the break of the resistance at $15 pretty big spike um, or the break below $14 just to kind of stay up to date on FTR. So I don't really use that, but I'm going to be making a video this week because some um, uh, a member suggested me to make that video. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a flatlining, so I, I like that. It's been flatlining at 222, and I did notice this. So overall, yeah. 
money, it's been showing signs of upward momentum. It's most likely going to hit a resistance at 240. The reason why is because that was a previous support, so it becomes a new resistance level. Um, somewhat of a support because it broke above. It looks like it was struggling to break above the 230 resistance, but now it's showing signs of upward momentum. It still has a small margin. It should have about 5%, yeah, from 230 to 240. Um, so if we can catch it closer near to the support at 230, sell it closer to near to the resistance at 240, and cut losses if it breaks below the support at 230, then that could be a plan. Then great. I'm gonna right now. It's above it, so calling out some pretty decent ones. Thank you. And then I already have my alert, so I was already waiting for the bounce. That's pretty sweet. All right, um, but again, guys, I, I, I mean, the reason I was doing the reason I do these whole just the Sunday stock talk is again just to share my whole thought process. So now that you guys have a better understanding on how I identify potential, um, kind of what I look for as myself as a, um, and how I plan out my trades on what I label as a good buy, you know, always trying to buy when it's showing signs of upward momentum, identifying the support, the resistance, again, just the fundamentals and the basics of trying to get in and have a good buy to let yourself for profit, balance and waiting for a break of a resistance to then, you know, understand that it's, it's showing signs of upward momentum. Um, that's really just it. It's a very simple concept, but it comes down to a lot of tedious work of, you know, dedicating time, potential, setting up a plan, and, you know, sticking to it. That's the biggest thing. Not just having a plan, but sticking to it and not letting your emotions plan, and, and you end up doing something completely different. So we've actually been going live, or we've been live for about 40 minutes. But I want to thank each and every one of you guys. You guys are, I want to remind you guys, if you guys haven't watched the, the most important video that, I don't know, I had a comment saying that the video that I uploaded earlier today about the $1,000 or how we made $1,000 profit within 24 hours. Someone said that was their favorite video. Um, I think it was because of my uh, roommate, Phil. He's a hilarious guy, and he's just super funny. Um, but one of my favorite videos that I think I uploaded, I really liked the video that I uploaded about, let, let me share it with you guys. You guys haven't watched it already. I, I really liked I really liked this one because I was able to talk to you guys, and I went kind of like on a, on a rant, so that was pretty cool. I really like the one that I uploaded about how I explained my whole thought process on my, you know, to make an offer on this fourplex. But the one that I liked the most, where is it? This one, how to start your business. It didn't do very well. But I, I thought because we had a lot of like entrepreneurs that that's something that you guys would like. I'm not too sure if you guys saw it, but I thought that was probably one of the coolest ones that I made. And it really got into detail and really just wanting to motivate you guys to like get started, you know, and work extra hard to make things happen. And but that's the one that I really enjoyed. But people, I guess, enjoy my roommate, uh, Phil, a little bit more and, and his character. He's a super funny guy, so I totally understand. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward. You know, this weekend has been extremely busy, and I probably work the most. If you guys, again, follow me on Instagram, I work probably the most on the weekends, and I try to work harder when other people, in a sense, take days off because I feel like that can kind of head right above everyone because you're working more than anyone else um, but also work smart right so so forward to because like you know this week and, and being able to day trade on monday and although i have to wake up again at 5 30 mountain standard time a.m um here in, in arizona it's just i love it I, I get a network and i get to surround myself with such motivated individuals and although i say that so much it real to me and i I, I feel like I have a huge following, and I, it's funny because I have 32,000 subscribers. Dude, guys, that's, that's enormous. I have 31,000 members within TechFoot Solutions, and my roommate's laughing because we have friends that have like 10 or 5, he has like 5.8 million, um, over 400,000, they have over 200,000 on Instagram, and you know, millions of followers on, and we, we need a bunch of different people that are doing so well on social media, but guys, I, that's not really what I ever focused on. I, I really never... I was like making, I really just worked as much as I could and, and would post like, and then I kind of found this platform, YouTube, where I found a lot of people that were like myself and really just wanted kind of like a platform to like-minded people. And that's why we created TechBuds, that's all it is. And I've been going back for, I, oh, you guys know. So it's, it's been super fun and it's an amazing experience. Thank you guys for, you know, 
guys put into the work and into our group. And one of the biggest things that really makes me really know that we're doing well is when not only people are showing the profits, because that's one thing, you know, that's great and I appreciate you guys. And if you guys want me to shout you out, you guys can direct message me them and I'll post them within my Instagram and try to give you shout outs on my YouTube channel. But the most important things is this being a networking platform, share their best practices, what led to their success and what led to their mistakes as well. So a learning experience. So the thousands of members that we have within our community don't make the same mistake. And at the end of the day to share that, that is one of the coolest and most rewarding, I think, posts because I really see that we're making a change. And it might not make sense to people, but that's that's really just it. So I want to thank you guys for everything. This is part of my 10th thank you. Um, but continue working hard. Continue doing what it is that you guys love. And make sure that at the end of the year, I'm going to Again, we're going to be live a.m. Mountain Standard Time, so about 30 minutes before the market opens. So if you guys want to join our live stream again, if you Grab if you guys aren't already. If you guys don't want to, totally un great. Understand? Plug. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> uh, go eat some canes. I'm I'm super pumped. So I'll be posting that on my Instagram. Thank you. Bye. But I uh, hope you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow at Market Open. Take.